Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this day. A few announcements before we begin. I, I know you often include me in your prayers, and I do appreciate that. Uh, please do so again this morning. Not feeling totally well, so just pray that uh, God can give you the strength and endurance to uh, do His work this morning on behalf of all of us. So thank you for that. Uh, a few announcements. Uh, other announcements. Um, servant. Uh, Serving opportunities, we have our blood drive, our trunk or treat, and opportunity to contribute to Thanksgiving meals with an offering envelope in the back as you depart. Uh, if you would like us to include loved ones in the prayers for All Saints Day and Veterans Day, there's details in your bulletin on how to submit those. Communion will be a little bit different starting today. Uh, we're going to have the elder bring up the communion elements right before consecration. Um, and then we'll distribute them during the singing of the Agnes Day. I will once again direct you to uh, consume the body and blood of our Lord and Savior all together as a congregation, like we've been doing. So, um, hopefully that will go smooth, smoothly. So, uh, Vicki, you have an announcement this morning. Do, thank you, Pastor. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. All right, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we're into October already. October brings many different things, and it also brings Pastor Appreciation Month. So, last year at this time, we didn't have a pastor. We had we didn't know who was coming to the pulpit. Well, the elders had the schedule, but we had someone different. We've been blessed to now have Pastor Robert, or as he, I'm sorry, Pastor Bill. Both are okay. As he prefers to be called. And uh, we wanted to recognize him and thank him for being called and taking our call to our church. Um, as you know, he started off rather rough with the pandemic. So I guess if you can cover a pandemic, you could probably do anything we throw at you, right? With God's help, yes. <laughs> so with that, we have a gift certificate for him because um, he does need to eat. And I found out from Food Authority, Janice, that you like Mexican cuisine. So there is a gift card in here for him for reverse. Now, whether you take Alex or Janice with you, that is up to you, but we are taking this so they will know you have it. So okay. again, thank you for coming and being our leader. Thank you. It's an honor and privilege to serve among you and, and with you, and it's just a joy to be here. And appreciate all your, your love and support for me and my family. Let's begin our worship this day. We give our sins to our Lord and receive his forgiveness. Let's stand. We make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father. Beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgive the iniquity of my sin. We pause for a moment of reflection. God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter suffering to death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant to the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, 
And instead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For all the 
gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory and do his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light, 
and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, the first chapter beginning with the first verse. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so that we need not say anything. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the verse. Life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the hymn.
okay, I'm probably not going to be able to buy much more than a big, colorful gumball, but I like big, colorful gumballs. This quarter, like any coin, meant to be spent. Now you or someone you know might be a collector of coins, and I can understand wanting to acquire a coin that is already historically significant or valuable, but what I do not understand is all those glossy newspaper ads and all those TV infomercials hawking coins that are sure to go up in value or sure to become a family heirloom to be passed down from generation to generation. Quite simply, I do not believe it. So I ask myself, why? Why buy such a coin? Because I don't believe it's going to go up in value. I don't believe it's going to be something you're really going to want to pass down from generation. And if you don't spend it, what's the point? It's just a coin. But then I remember, I have such a coin. A coin that is actually not just a coin. Now the box on the outside is kind of worn over all these years, but inside there's still a nice case, and if you open it up, you've got a nice coin, and it's in one of those protective cases that's not able to be opened. So I have one of those things as well. But as I said, it's more than just a coin. This happens to be a United States silver dollar dated 1983. It has a special inscription on the back, Los Angeles, 23rd Olympiad, an American athlete in motion, and the word liberty. This was more than just a coin. This was a, ray, a way to raise funds to train our Olympic athletes for the summer 1984 Olympic Games. This was a symbol, a reminder of a battle going on between two ways of governing, the communist way of the Soviet Union and the democracy way of the United States. It was a, represented a battle to prove which system would be superior, communist red or the red, white, and blue of liberty and freedom, of truth and justice and the American way. This was more than just a coin, and so it is in our gospel text this morning. It's Tuesday of Holy Week. And there's a rather unusual alliance happening between the Pharisees and the Herodians. The Pharisees, we know well, the religious leaders of God's chosen people, concerned about the management of the temple and making sure that everyone adheres to all the rules and regulations of the religious law. The Herodians, we don't know so well, perhaps, but we hear in their name, Herod. And yes, these are people loyal to King Herod and his descendants, for they owe their local government jobs to the emperor in Rome. Now the Pharisees and Herodians have nothing in common, except they both like their positions of authority. They enjoy their own power and prestige. And they get to keep them if and only if law and order can be maintained. And Rome doesn't have to come down there and fix things. And they both see Jesus as a threat. The Rodians see more and more that the people are fixing for a rebellion with Jesus as their conquering hero. And the Pharisees are hearing Jesus teach about the kingdom of God in ways so foreign to their experience and so threatening to their influence over the people. This is what unites them, their opposition to Jesus. And they think that they have laid the perfect trap 
for our Lord? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? If Jesus says no, he's a tax dodger, an enemy of the state, and all the Herodians have to do is appeal to Rome to do away with this rebel. If Jesus says yes, well, that takes a little bit more explanation. God's people of old were just like us. They did not enjoy paying taxes either. And this particular tax was especially galling. It was a census tax, a head tax that every person used by Rome to run the empire. In short, the people of God were paying for the privilege of being occupied and ruled by an empire they hated. And the coin required for this tax bore an inscription. Tiberius Caesar, august son of the divine Augustus, most high priest. This is what made this tax so troubling. Someone other than God being called divine. For a faithful follower of God, a galling violation of the first commandment. The people, in fact, did take this quite seriously. They would not use that coin for their offerings at the temple for that reason. So indeed, if Jesus says, yes, pay this tax, he'll be less popular among the people of God, something the Pharisees very much want to see. The Herodians and the Pharisees think that they have Jesus right where they want him. Heads we win, tails he loses. Now Jesus doesn't have one of these coins, so he asks to see one. Whose likeness and inscription is this? Caesar's. Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and the things to God that are God's. But looking first at the first part of his response, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. It's got his name on it, so give him back what is his. Not the answer that some wanted to hear, including us. But Jesus always obeyed God's law. Hear the fourth commandment, the one that tells us to respect the authorities that God has placed over us, including government, for they are placed over us by God to provide us a more safe and secure and orderly society. We do have a lot in common with the folks back then. Not only do we not like sending taxes to places like Springfield and Washington, we sometimes disagree vehemently with the laws being made. They're not quite like Rome, but at times they can feel oppressive in their own right. What then? Pray for your leaders. Respect them. Thank God for them. And pay your taxes. Protest the things that are opposed to what God tells us. Try to change those policies. For instance, we were right to fight the redefinition of marriage. We were right to fight the attempts to include abortion-inducing drugs in our synod's health care plan. We were right to fight the increasing exclusion of the name of God in public life. But we are also right to pay our taxes. For God can work through leaders we don't like, leaders who pass laws that we don't like, and God can work through those leaders even when we do not see it. Our Old Testament meeting today is another example of a leader the people probably don't like all that much. But let's go back to our roots, all the way back 
to Genesis, where mankind was created in God's image. And on our hearts were inscribed some of the very characteristics of God. We reflected his perfection, his holiness, his righteousness. We lived our lives in accordance with his will. But then we decided we want different inscriptions. Things like my own agenda, selfishness, anger, hate, and jealousy. And throughout the Old Testament, our ancestors did what we do. They lived a sinful life. And they eventually faced the consequences of their actions. And they pleaded to God for mercy. And he forgave them. And then we repeat the cycle over and over again. Until one day God finally had enough. You people really need to learn a lesson. I will let a foreign power rule over you and haul you off in captivity. Then you will realize you really do need to depend on me. Our Lord must be thinking. Which brings us to today's Old Testament reading. And a man named Cyrus. Cyrus was the ruler of the Babylonians the enemies of God's people who had captured them and oppressed them. A man who had inscribed these words for history. I am Cyrus, king of the world, great king, legitimate king, king of Babylon. A man who placed himself high on a pedestal, even above the God he did not know. This does not bode well for God's people of old. The rule of Cyrus looks to be harmful for the people of God, so much so that they might call him Cyrus the virus. But God has a different name for Cyrus. It's in verse 1, his anointed. You've heard that term used to describe someone else in the Bible. Someone you like a whole lot better. For when it's used in the New Testament, it's the same word as Messiah. Don't you find that a little strange, if not disturbing? That God would use that name for a guy like Cyrus? But Cyrus is not in control. All earthly authority comes ultimately from God. We confess in the creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. We live in two kingdoms, both created by God, both belonging to God, both ruled by God. The earth, the government, often called the kingdom of the left. And that's why it's appropriate to have an American flag to your left as you face the altar. Here God rules through power, and we live as citizens of a country. Heaven, spiritual things, the kingdom of the right. Hence, the Christian flag is a pulpit on your right. Here, God rules through grace and mercy. And even here and even now, we live as citizens of heaven, our ultimate home. Now, Cyrus is not in control. God is. And he will use Cyrus to issue a decree that God's people can go home. And God has sent his promised Messiah, Jesus Christ, to tell his people, you and me, that one day you can go home. A Messiah who came down from the heavenly home and who lived the perfect, obedient life 
that we could not. Jesus sent to suffer and die for the sins of the world so that we might have forgiveness and life. A Messiah with inscriptions of his own, nail wounds in his hands and his feet, and the imprint of a spear in his side. Yes, we are to pay taxes. Jesus said, render to Caesar what is Caesar's. But Jesus did not stop there. And to God, what is God's? On the last day, it will be Jesus who will give back to God what is His. For God has marked us as His own. Remember the words of our baptism liturgy. Receive the sign of the cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified, the sign of the cross, God's holy inscription, God claiming us as his own, wiping away any claim that sin and Satan and death may think they have on us for eternity. For child of God is written upon us, we are His. And Jesus will come back to return us to where we belong and to the one we belong to for eternity. Until then, we pay to Caesar our taxes, but we give to God what is rightfully His. Sometimes, yes, our coins, but more than that, our thanks our praise, our devotion, and our worship, and indeed, our very selves, now and for life everlasting. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus until life eternal. Amen. In just a moment, we'll rise for the prayers of the church, but I wanted to see if there's any specific prayer request that you would like me to bring forward this day. Does anyone have anything? Yes. Um, for Eric Marshall and uh, his family, um, his son died in an automobile accident in the last week. And let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We offer to you, Lord, the sacrifice of our prayer and praise. You have blessed us with the gift of life in your Son, Jesus Christ. You provide for all our needs, even when we are unaware. Accept our humble thanksgiving and empower us to demonstrate our thanks in words, actions, and dedicated service to you, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We acknowledge that you are the Lord, and there is no other. Strengthen us to resist temptations to serve other gods, whether things of this world, others, or ourselves. Open our eyes to see your presence in all of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, has reminded us to render to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to you what is yours, as you have established all authority over us. We pray for our leaders in this world, nation, state, and community. Give them wisdom and courage to act with justice and mercy for all lives, including the unborn and aged, the vulnerable and needful. Bless also those who serve our church as elected and called officials, and the leaders within our own congregation, that all actions bring glory to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up all those in need, the hungry and homeless, the mourning and grieving, and all who seek healing, including Vicki, Angie, Nancy, Tracy, Barb, Cindy, Stephen, Donovan, Danny, Karen, John, Debbie, Dorothy, Ron, Dennis, Ben, Kathy, Barbara, the Bukowski family, Jan, Daryl, Linda, Don, Adeline, James, Debbie, Keith, Tom, Carol, Rick, Jimmy, Audrey, Janice, Dave, Kevin, 
hearts at this time. Give peace, hope, and healing according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you to provide wisdom, stamina, and good health to all who serve as doctors, nurses, or medical researchers, to those who work to end disease, and to those who care for people most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you to be with those who grieve and who mourn. In this day, we especially ask you to be with the families of Eric and Gail. Surround them with your peace and your comfort. Remind them of the resurrection of all who believe in your Son, Jesus Christ. Comfort them with that reality and the sure and certain hope of our, resurrect, or of our reunion in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for those who are celebrating special days this week, for those who are celebrating birthdays, including Betty, Scott, John, Dave, Kaylee, Ethan, Angela, Zach, and Emmett. Continue to watch over them and bless them and keep them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give other prayers and petitions to you via the words of our hearts in silent prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all who commune today, that through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, we be strengthened in your forgiveness, enabled to withstand temptations of the devil, and empowered to lovingly serve neighbors in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Seated for our final.